Hello fellow diamond painting addicts and welcome back to Diamond Painting Anonymous. I'm Daphne and I'm excited to bring to you today kind of a new for me video. Uh, new, not new. It's sort of an unboxing, sort of a kit up, sort of a thank you. <laughs> so it's a, it's a burrito video. Lots of stuff rolled into one. That's what I'm going to call it. Okay. A couple of thank yous before I begin, and that is a huge thank you to Susan from Ontario, one of my subscribers. She is the lovely person who sent me this kit. And a big thank you to Krista, who runs Craft Pack Canada. I emailed her with a bunch of questions that I had. She very kindly responded, and so I have some things that I'm going to share with you as I sort of unbox and kit up this kit. Honestly, it's been so long, I don't even remember how this arrived. It probably was in a box. What kind of box? I don't remember. It is a kit and you can see it's double-sided adhesive. I'll get to that. It was wrapped around this lovely pool noodle to keep it nice while it was being transported. So here is, you can see here's the picture. I'm assuming this probably came off the box. And then this here as well. So this is the canvas. Susan also included the drills, the sheet of paper, the canvas itself, and this. So no toolkit with it. I didn't need one, so I don't know what comes in their toolkits, but I didn't need one, so it's all good. So I'm gonna be using my Elizabeth Ward, one of my Elizabeth Ward trays to kit this up. It does come on sticker paper. This is on sticker paper. So I'm gonna cut this off here so that I can put it on my containers. However, there are no legends on the actual canvas, and I'll show you that when I show it to you. So what I did was make a copy of this sheet. It's 50 colors. And so I made a copy of this sheet just so that I can have something to reference since I don't have a legend. I mean, it's on the kit, so I probably won't need it. But just in case, since I'm going to be cutting the, the stickers up, I thought I would do that. And then, of course, I'll save this sticker so that I can put it in my logbook. So let me move some of this stuff out of the way now that I've shown all of that to you. And here is the canvas. Now it says that the canvas itself is 51 by 41. The drill area is 49 by 37. Now this is a double-sided adhesive kit, like I said. Now it was rolled around the pool noodle, so I have already pulled up the cover sheet and kind of laid it out to flatten it out so that it wouldn't, so that it would lay flat so I could show it to you guys. So you can see up here in this corner, it's got Craft Pack with the little maple leaf, their logo, it says Flamingo on it. And then down here at the bottom, it says, relax your body, calm your mind and soothe your spirit. This is a Flamingo. Uh, I think it's called Flamboyant Flamingo on their website. They use Canadian photographers that they license their art. So this is, ooh, I looked up his name, what is his name? Aaron Drover is the photographer who took this picture. Okay, so obviously Craft Pack Canada is located in Canada and I'll stick a link to their website down below so you can go check it out. They are located in Ontario, Canada, obviously Canada. They ship within Canada, they ship to the US, they ship to the UK and Poland is what it says currently. Poland seemed like a weird one, but you know, the way shipping goes, who knows? Uh, it is free shipping if you order over $70 Canadian within Canada or the US. $70 Canadian is roughly $52 US. So uh, if you wanted to get a couple of kits, then you'd get free shipping. Now, this one is double-sided adhesive. However, Krista did tell me that she has been switching over to poured glue. She was having some issues with the double-sided adhesive, and I think I'm having the same issues, but I'm not worried about it, so that's okay. So new kits are gonna be poured glue, and when we get to the drills, the drills are resin. So only round drills at the moment. Uh, she is looking into squares, but currently only round drills. However, as I've said many times, I'm an equal opportunity diamond painter. I don't care if it's round or square, so I'm all good. They do have some other accessories. She does customs, and they also sell 
blank canvases. So if you were gonna do like a cross stitch conversion, now she sells the canvases both for round drills and square drills. So if you know what size you need, you could just probably contact her and ask for a size either for round or square drills. Because like heaven and earth only sells for square drills, everything is sized for squares. So, but sometimes people have lots of rounds they want to use as well. So this is a flamingo, which Susan sent me because I have been on a flamingo kick since forever. And so she sent me this lovely kit. Now, I don't know if you can see, but kind of around the edges, the, the um, actual cover paper, it's like, almost like it is melt, <laughs> not melting, but it's very sticky. And see, if I peel this away, see you can see the edges here. It's like it's going transparent instead of opaque. And I'm not sure why that is. So when I asked Krista about it, because we all know double-sided adhesive can be fussy, she said that's the issue that she's been having is that the edges get kind of gummy. And that's probably the best way to describe it. I'm not overly concerned about it because one, I'm gonna washi tape the edges, so it shouldn't be an issue for me. And two, I'm gonna replace this cover paper with my own cover sheets. So once I do both of those things, I don't think I'm gonna have an issue. Now, I will say it is double-sided adhesive and you can see there's some of that, see how my fingers are sticking together because I touched the edge? But it washes right off and it doesn't hurt the diamond painting, so it's all good. Now, I did have a couple of rivers in here because there were some creases in the cover sheet. What I did was I went back over, I laid the, first of all, I pulled the cover sheet up and then put it back down so that it would lay flat. And when I laid it back down, I used my little smoother tool here. You can use a brayer or you know your hand, whatever you want, whatever you have handy to help you lay it down flat. You can see, well, I don't know if you can see, but there was like a little kind of crease here that made a little river in the diamond painting itself. Now, when I run my fingers over it, it's a little, there's a little bump right there. Most of it flattened out though, so I don't need to worry about it. I am going to be getting out my X-Acto knife when I get to those sections and I will, all I do is I take my X-Acto knife and I make square little cuts, little teeny cuts across where the tape has kind of bubbled up and that air is trapped. And then I will put the, a cover sheet over it and then I will go over it with my brayer or my little smoother again you can use a credit card whatever you have handy and smooth out those so that your drills aren't wobbly when you put them on there but those were the only issues that i had other than that i'm perfectly happy with it and like i said i don't mind double-sided adhesive so i am going to take my cute flamingo washi tape that i got from i can't remember where but i was so excited to get it because i knew i had this kit and i've hung on to it so i'm going to washi tape the edges of this. Now, normally I have all of this done beforehand, but I kind of wanted you guys to see the process. I mean, I'm sure if you're, a, you know, a, you've been diamond painting for a while, you know what this looks like. So if you, you want to skip it, go right ahead. It won't hurt my feelings. But for those of you who maybe are a little bit new and want to see how this works, I'm always fascinated by why some washi tape unrolls this way and the other ones unroll the other way but whatever the reason. Okay, so now, something I've never run into before, because there's not much of a margin here, I'm going to, my washi tape is actually going to run over the edge of the kit, but that's okay. I'm just gonna place it where I want, and then I will just fold the edge of the washi over. Clearly not a very sturdy piece of washi tape since it's already ripping. I guess it works out since I don't need it to be super fat right there, but I'm gonna cut off that piece where it ripped and see if I can keep it from doing that again. I am just gonna cover that piece up though. Now I've got this whole side where the tape would be covered. I've got my washi tape on it and then I'm just gonna pull this up and then I'm gonna fold it over. Just kind of a bummer, which means my flamingos are gonna be kind of hidden, but that's okay. So I'm just gonna fold it over like this. These are edges that will either be hidden once I finish the kit or they'll get cut off when I frame it, depending on what I decide to do. Okay, so there's that edge. I think I'm gonna lay this back down just gently. 
And I'm gonna do this edge. That side is very gummy, so let me pour, pull it up on this side. That side is gummy as well. All right, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pull it this way, and then I'm gonna do the top edge. Because I don't wanna pull off the double-sided tape with the cover sheet. That's what I'm trying to avoid doing because that's just gonna make more complications for myself. And like I said, this is something that if you order a kit from them, you will not have to worry about because they will be poured glue for anything new. Now she did say some of the older stock might still be double-sided adhesive, but like I said, I'm for as many people as complain about double-sided adhesive, when I first started diamond painting, I didn't realize there was a difference. Like, I, that's what I got, right? Because that's, at the time, what everybody was using when I started diamond painting. So now I've got that nice little edge there, nothing really bleeding through. So there's one edge. I can see I've got that little river there that I will need to clean up with my X-Acto knife, but that's okay. All right, so this edge, I also want to peel back. And I have cover sheets that I'm going to be using to cover this diamond painting. So I could be using those, but I'm just trying to do this this way. Maybe not my best method, but I wanted you guys to kind of get, get a feel for what this is and how it works, right? Not just this diamond painting company, but how diamond painting kind of works in general as well, right? So this one also, the flamingos are gonna go a little bit over the edge. Not as much as they did on the other side. This this side is quite a bit larger. And then I'm going to have to fold over that little edge. Let me start in the middle here. Again, you know, not a big deal. I could have cut the washi tape, but I think it's just as easy to fold it over. And I can still see a little bit of my flamingos. Okay, and then the last edge here is the bottom one. So let me pull this up. And you just want to washi tape the bottom of these or the edges of these so that, you know, as you're working, you're not laying your hand in the tape and getting all kinds of dirt and debris and dust trapped in the tape. I mean, it may not matter because you're going to be cutting probably it off anyway. Ooh, this washi tape is like the exact right size to lay on this edge. I'm covering up her little tagline there, but that's okay. I like that my washi tape is just wide enough so I can see my cute little flamingos. All right, and I think I have enough washi tape left that I actually could do a second flamingo diamond painting. Because I want to measure and do some other things, and I really, it's not that easy to do that with this opaque cover sheet on, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put on my release papers that I made, and you guys, I'm so excited. Look at these cute flamingo release papers that I made. I think I had to make four sheets to, to get them cut up. These are roughly four by five and a half, something like that. So I'm just going to place them here. I'm trying to figure out, I need to place them on the edge, but not quite, because I want to measure. So I don't want to cover up everything because the dimensions of this Let's see, the canvas area is supposed to be 51 by 41, and then the drill area is 49 by 37. So let me do the 49 first and see what we get. So now I've got everything covered up, so I'm not accidentally gonna lay my tape here in the tape. <laughs> I'm not gonna lay my measuring tape in the double-sided adhesive. All right, so from there to there, that is 48 and a half, it looks like to me, centimeters, 19 inches from actual drill field to drill field, 48 and a half. All right, now let me put the rest of my release papers on. Let me pull this edge off. So I can put them here. Let's see, do I wanna put them this way? So I've got that right at the edge. So if I do this, I like to stagger my release papers a little bit so I don't have like a definite line when I go to work on my diamond paintings. Mm -mm, that's not what I want, pull off, okay. I want it right on the edge there, but I don't mind if it goes up over the tape on that. Okay, 
and then it said 37 centimeters this way so I've got from here to there it's 36 and a half so 48 and a half by 36 and a half so pretty good now again not a lot of overhang because there's no legend which is why you get the printed stickers so I'm just very quickly gonna put the rest of my release papers on top of this and get rid of this big cover sheet and I will be right back okay so I've got my flamingo release papers all over where it's gonna be sticky I've got my washi tape on the edges so now my canvas is going to be nice and protected until I peel up the section where I'm going to be working. So I'm good to go. So now I'm going to move on to the kitting up portion, I think. Let's see. We measured. It's nice and sticky. I'm going to show you the drills. And as I show you the drills, I'm going to be kind of kitting everything up as well. So yeah, don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. So I'm ready to start kitting up. However, what I want to do first is I want to cut out my stickers here. So because this won't fit in my size, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to roughly cut it here and then I will cut everything else down. This I'm going to leave as is because this sticker I will use again, like I said, in my log book. So this one just gets stuck underneath the tray so that I know where it goes. And then I am going to kind of trim these, go from there. Okay, so now enough of that is trimmed off that I can fit it in this way. Now, I want the symbols, definitely, because I diamond paint by symbol. I know there's a lot of people who diamond paint by number. I do not do that. And I do want to leave the DMC codes on there. I have my other sheet, so if I lose them, that's, you know, not a huge deal, but I prefer to hang on to them. So I'm just gonna cut this so that I have all of the DMC codes because I don't need the amount of drills of each one. I don't need that. And I should have left myself something to hang on to, shouldn't I? I forgot that part. All right, well, let me, <laughs> Oh, I could print these again on my own sticker paper, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna make do, but let me go grab my other scissors and get this out of the way. I'll be right back. And I think I'm going to get rid of this piece. I don't need that since I've already got the sticker with the thing on it. I don't need to know what kit it is, so I'm good there. So what I've got is my little sheet here. I've got all of my stickers, which I'm gonna cut, and I've got all of my drills here. So what I probably should do is sort my drills into somewhat of DMC order, right? Just so I can have some semblance of order of all of these drills. I could have done this off camera. Oh, I guess I can show it to you guys, show them to you guys as I'm doing this since you haven't seen the drills, okay? So we've got this lovely kind of dark green. We've got a pink a baby blue, a slightly lighter pink, and like a dark salmon. Now let's see if I can remember all of these <laughs> as I'm putting them. Oh, this is a 700, so there's like that spring green. There's a dark pink. Can't wait to see how many pinks I get in this one. There is a very dark hunter green, a very pale pink, and another pink. All right, because so I've got to sort these into DMC order. So there's like a very dark, it's kind of a turquoisey green. We've got kind of a dark khaki brown, like an olive brown, another light blue. We've got another dark green. We've got another kind of a turquoisey sea green. We've got another green, lots of green in this one. I don't think any of them are duplicates. Okay, so there's a true green and another in-between green shade. There is a purple. I don't think I would have expected purple to be a color in this, but I guess we'll see. We've got kind of a, it's kind of a reddish mauve. And then we've got a dark red. We've got a mauve. We've got a baby pink. I'm trying to show you the colors as I sort them and my brain is getting fried, can you tell? 
So there's a, another green. There is another kind of blush pink. Then I've got a very kind of dark chocolatey slate brown. Another kind of pale purple. Another dark green. I've got a red, a dark blue, kind of an orangish salmon color. Then we've got like a turquoise green, a true turquoise. We've got another kind of pinky red. We've got a very pale, like mint baby blue, another kind of salmony mauve color. Ooh, a bright pink. I'm loving all the pinks in this. A slightly darker pink. Then we've got a pale pink. I don't know how long it's, I don't know that I've ever had 3600s. If I have, it has been a quite some time and there's quite a few in here. So all of these kind of shades of pinky purple, so a very light, and then these two dark and then lighter shades, all in the 3600s. Then we've got another light purple, a bright pink, another pink. So pink and green are the shades here, so a lighter green and a slightly darker green. And then we've got our black. That is not much black for this size of kit. And then a very kind of peachy pink. There's all the colors, again, 50 colors. So now uh, that I have them all in DMC order, I am going to see what sizes of containers I need. So first of all, what containers would I need for these biggest ones? I don't think I have any that I need these three very extra large containers. So I'm gonna set those out of the way and I'm gonna use this size because I think black and the greens that I have will probably fit in this. Now, this is my one Elizabeth Ward tray that I have put washi tape on here. I use this one when I'm not sure how well the stickers will remove. Now it is sticker paper, but not all sticker paper is easily removable. So just in case, to make it easier on myself when I go to kit down, I will use these containers with the washi tape on them so that I know. So 310 should go in one of these. So I'm just gonna cut the sticker that I need because I didn't give myself any room to hang on to any of these like a ding dong, and then see if I can get these peeled away so I can use these stickers. Usually it's not an issue, it's just a little bit of finessing to get the paper to pull away from the backing paper to pull away from the sticker. All right, so we've got DMC 310, and it's okay with me if it wraps around because my washi tape wraps around, so it's all good. Now, if you want a diamond paint from baggies, you are certainly able to do that here. I just, that's not my preference. I spill too many things, so I always want to empty mine into containers. All right, so there's that one. Then let's see, 703, I have quite a few, so I'm going to find 703, and then I'm just cutting this one sticker with the symbol there. Like I said, if I would have been thinking about it, I would have remembered that I needed to leave a little bit of a gap there so that I could get these easily separated instead of doing what I'm doing. So 703, again, I'll wrap it around. Come on, get out of there. All right. And then I think I'm gonna put 701 in there as well in one of these larger ones. Yeah, really don't do what I just did and don't leave yourself any kind of wiggle room for these stickers. Like I said, if I'd have been paying attention, I wouldn't have cut it off that short. This is why a lot of times you'll see me do all my cuts and everything before I start filming because sometimes once I start filming, my brain does not fire on all cylinders. And then I'm like, why did I do it that way? Let me put these in here. I should have got out a little tray just to make sure that I wasn't going to be spilling anything, but I think I'm okay. All right, so before I go on to any of these other colors, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these in the smallest ones. And what I'm likely going to end up doing is going and rating some of my other Elizabeth Ward trays for this size of container. 
so that I can have containers in the size that I need. But we'll see. Okay, I think what I'm gonna do with this one, because basically I need to put all of these on these small containers. What is 309? Yeah, 309 is small as well. So I'm gonna take all of these and I'm just gonna start peeling them like this so that they're already peeled as I cut them. So they're a little easier for me to put on. Now, the reason I don't have washi tape on these particular ones, because by the time you put the washi tape on, because of the way the handles on these this size works, you know, it's so small, this little, where this little indentation is, there's just not enough room to put on the washi tape. I mean, I could have got some super thin washi tape, I guess, but it's just as easy to do it this way. They're small enough that these stickers, you can see they don't sit flush all the way anyway. So they stay on nicely while I'm working, but they are loose enough that when I go to take the stickers off when I'm finished, that you know I can lift up where they're not stuck down really well pretty easily. And as long as you go slow, most stickers will come off fairly easily. Occasionally you'll get some that are kind of fussy, but I think for the most part, most of them come off pretty well, no matter who you get them from. And if they don't, then you can always do what I do. And I keep a little spray bottle of goof off that is adhesive remover. And I keep that in my crafting area and I just use that to spray on the containers and then I will wipe it off. Now, I've had people tell me they don't like doing that because the Goo Gone can leave like an oily residue. I've never had an issue with it. You know, I, I spray it on a rag and then I wipe it on the containers and I've not noticed that it makes them extra oily, in my opinion. You know, your mileage may vary. If, if that's something that bothers you, then maybe that's something you need to look at. But for me, it's fine. I care more about getting all the adhesive removed off of my containers, so it's all good. I think most of these colors are probably going to go in these small containers, but I do have a couple that could go in the bigger size containers, so that's 211. I actually didn't look to see if I had any a b drills that i could add in however uh, after looking at the flamingo and looking at the painting which if i can remember i will get the painting out and i will pull off the cover sheet so we can kind of look at the drills and everything look at the drill field so you can see what the symbols look like i don't think i'm going to add any a b's because it's such a realistic flamingo that i think it would look odd if i did it that way okay so all of these i'm trying to think maybe this one i'll put in the next size up because there's a little bit too more too much in that one and maybe this one as well all right so 561 and 316 and i'm gonna do i'm gonna cut this at 604 right there so that I can do the same thing I did here where I can kind of peel these off and cut them and put the stickers on with the backing already peeled away just to make it a little bit easier on myself. So I want to put 316 in that size and then the next three are going to be in the smaller containers. And while I am putting these on here, let's see, 554 is going in a small one and then 561 is going in this large size okay so i was looking on the craft pack canada website to see what other kind of kits they have a lot of like um lifelike realistic photos because they're using you know, photographers, Canadian photographers. They did have a couple that were not ultra realistic. One of them that I had my eye on is this really cute, it's like little uh, gnomes. It's like a little boy and a girl gnome and they've got little pink hearts around them. It's like a pink and brown kind of color scheme, very cute. Have my eye on that one. 
and then there was a moose that I was like, oh, I should get that one because I'm constantly telling my husband whenever we go to Canada, I have never seen a moose. I can't say that anymore because we did actually see one on our last trip. We were driving to visit family in a different city and it was very far away and he thinks it was a baby because it wasn't very big. The semi next to us had slowed down. So he, he, we think what happened is the mom crossed and then the baby was following it because literally the semi was already stopped in the right hand lane. And as we came up on it, we're like, what is he doing? Because he was just stopped kind of in the middle of the road. All right, all of these I think can go in these small ones. So I've got all of these here, the stickers, which again, I'm gonna peel that backing away so I can put them on here. And then I've got 702 is already cut. So when I get to that one, I can just peel it away. Anyway, so now I can't say I haven't seen a moose anymore, but, and you guys, these are resin drills, which is amazing. I'm excited for when she gets square resin drills because I know that's a big deal for a lot of you. I personally am okay with either. And I guess it depends on who you ask. Like I've seen, I saw, what was I, I don't remember where I was, on social media somewhere probably. And somebody saying that, you know, they preferred the rounds because the rounds were more sparkly because they have more facets. Of course, you don't see as much sparkle with the squares because they get shoved right next to each other. And I never really thought about that, but I guess it's true. All right, 604. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna need to go grab some of my extra little teeny sizes like this, because these are my last four, and I already don't have enough. I am super excited for all of these pinks though. Now I'm trying to rearrange my tray here so I can get everything where it needs to be. All right, I hope I didn't move the camera there. I think for my 890, because my 800s will be the next one, I think that one needs to go in a larger container. So maybe I'll do that one before I go hunt up. No, I need to cut the stickers, so I guess I'll just go, I'll go hunt up some of these smaller sizes so that I can do all of these. All right, so 702, that needs to go in a small size. What's my order here? And then 890 needs to go in the biggest one. Okay, so if I cut all these, I just got down to 899. So I'm just gonna cut those there so that I can do like I was gonna do and I will peel this off and then work my way down the rest. Let me go grab my extra, extra, extra small containers and I will be right back. Okay, so I just grabbed one of my Bella trays so I can have something here to catch it. I love these. This is their old version, but I love these with the, the little right hand pour spout. These just work so well. My hands are smaller than most people's. And so I really like this one. It fits in my hand, it's a nice size and yeah, okay. So I've got all my extra little tiny ones here. So what number am I ready for? Number for 702, which needs to go in one of these small ones. I'm loving the colors in this kit. I can't wait to see what it looks like when I get them all in the tray and I show you the final tray. Just seeing all the colors. I think that's one of my favorite things on Instagram is to watch everybody show all of their Elizabeth Ward trays with all of the, what the color palettes look like on you know various projects that they're working on. Trying to get my scissors open there enough that I can cut all of this off in one go. So I wanted to ask you guys, I've decided one of the things that I want to do is kind of broaden my diamond painting horizons. I think I've kind of gotten stuck doing things from the same few companies and nothing, you know, not that anything is wrong with that. I mean, there's something to be said for, you know, you know what product you're getting. And everyone has their favorites, of course, but I would love to try new things. So leave me a comment down below with the name of a diamond painting company you think I should try. Now, that being said, please don't tell me diamond painting companies that you know I've already tried something from. So 
you know, kind of the big ones, Diamond Art Club, Dreamer Designs. Uh, of course, I've tried many, several kits from Oraloa, Craftably. I've done Diamond Painting Deutschland. I've done, well, I haven't opened them yet, but I do have some kits from Jaded Gem Shop. So I bought from her, uh, Diamond Painting Shop, Distracted by Diamonds, uh, Mary's Diamonds, DIY Moon. I mean, I've bought from DIY Moon before, but then of course they closed. Where's 890? Oh, I put that sticker on the wrong one. See you guys? Let me see if I can peel that off now. See, it's not really stuck there. So if I peel it off slowly, it comes off nicely and I can put it on the size that I meant to put it on, which is this one. So I saw that somebody is buying DIY Moon, like did Bella Art buy them as well? So I guess it's not going to be Mary's Diamonds anymore. It's going to be Bella Art or Bella's Diamonds. I can't remember what they were going to call it. But anyway, I'm trying to think who I haven't bought from. I've looked at Bella Safina, but I've not bought from them. Oh, I have bought from Treasure Studios Art. So I bought from them. I bought from Homecraftology. I have bought from and licensed diamond painting companies. Not that there's anything wrong with budget companies, but the budget companies tend to be, if one, one company has a kit, they all have that kit. So yeah, I'm looking for ones that maybe I haven't tried yet. I'm trying to think, I know I asked this question again recently too, and, and so let's see, uh, Francesca's Studio Works. Although I think when I went to go look at that one, there weren't, Either there weren't any diamond paintings listed because she sells drills for like heaven and earth designs. YLJ, I think, was one. Um, I think Sherry Baldi sells her own. Uh, Lola Rose. I looked at the one with the diamond art, carrot art. Now, of course, I'm in the US, so I would prefer companies that are in the US just because that's going to be less shipping for me. But if you think there's a really, really cool one, like I've had, is it Diamond Art UK? I've had a lot of people say is really good. It's just, yeah, I would prefer to stick with ones that are in the US just for, I mean, cause there's plenty to choose from. And you know, if somebody's a YouTuber in the UK, I'd rather have them talk about, you know, those kind of diamond paintings. Cause it's probably cheaper for them anyway. All right, so now I'm in the 900s. Let's see what kind of bags I need for this. So these three, I think, can go in the small ones, but I think these two I'm gonna put in this size. So let me cut down to 992 on this one. All right, so 905 and 906, I want to go in the bigger ones. Just reminding myself, so. I can keep track of what I'm doing here. I hope you can't hear my husband making noise. He got a day off work today. He's actually had quite a few days off work. So this week he worked on Monday, Sunday, Saturday night, Sunday was, we were out of power. That was a whole saga. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell, because I'll be talking about that on my upcoming whip and chat on Sunday. And then he worked on Monday, which we had some more storms roll through and we thought maybe he was gonna get called out. They had some pretty bad storms on the East Coast and we were expecting that they would get called out for that, they didn't. He was off on Tuesday because we had an appointment we had to go to. And then we got up uh, Wednesday morning when we woke up Wednesday morning, it was pouring rain. And so he thought he was going to get a rain day. And usually if they're not going to work, I'll get a call from him. They decide by like nine o'clock. Yeah, we're not going to work the rest of the day. And I hadn't heard from him. So I thought, well, must not be raining wherever they are, even if it's raining at our house. So he must not be getting a rain day. Well, I just hadn't waited long enough because... <laughs> I actually sat down to start filming and he called me and said, oh, it's too muddy. So it's a mud day. It's so mu it rains so much. Everything is so muddy. They can't get the trucks back into where they need to be because the trucks are so heavy. They just sink in the mud. I could never do his job 
be outside in all that heat with all the bugs and mud and dirt. I always tell him that's whenever he's talking about how hot or cold it is, that's why he makes the big bucks because nobody wants to do that job. <laughs> so he really enjoys it though, which is nice. I think we'd all be a lot happier if we enjoyed our jobs, right? It's not as much work if you actually enjoy what you're doing. Okay, I've got four teeny tiny ones left and I don't think that's going to be enough. I think I'm going to end up going to steal some from another kit, but let me just continue this. Let me put these in order. Four, seven, two, five, two, six. Um, this one maybe can go in that size and then those four definitely. Okay, so I've got enough to do these four and then when I get into the last 36, 37, and 38 hundreds, then I need to go scare up some more of the small size ones. I'm really enjoying these super duper small scissors. Okay, which one did I want? That one is the one I wanted in the big one. So I don't confuse myself again as I'm cutting these. So three, three, two, six. I'm really excited to do this one. I actually have not been diamond painting as much as I would like over the last few days. Just lots of stuff going on, but yeah, excited to get, I mean, I probably shouldn't have opened another one because I've got two open already, but yeah, I wanted to get to this one. It's been sitting here forever. It was one that I was actually saving to do. I got it last year. Susan sent it to me last year and I was going to do it for DP for pets this year. And then I got sidetracked doing other stuff. So, so now I'm getting to it. And again, a huge thank you to Susan for sending it to me. It's super cute. Who doesn't love flamingos? And it gave me an excuse to do all kinds of fun projects like making my own little release papers, playing around in Canva and Procreate and Photoshop. And my daughter's been working on some too. I'm trying to convince her to open a stationary business with me, but she's resisting it. I've been playing around making all kinds of like memo pads for myself, little planner pads for myself like grocery to-do lists. I'm just having a ton of fun playing around and making stuff. She's much more professionally artistic than I am. I just like playing around with stuff. She uh, took a lot of art in high school and has always loved to draw and everything. She's really good at it. I keep trying to convince her to go into business by herself and then I decided if I couldn't convince her to go in by herself, maybe I could convince her to go in with me. All right, all of these I think need to go in small ones and I think the 37s in small ones as well. So I think I am going to go put some of these other size away and I'm gonna go raid another tray for the smaller sizes. So I will be right back, don't go anywhere. All right, I think I've got enough containers to finish up here. So 36.89, again, I'm gonna cut here. So I can peel this back and all of these are going to go on small containers. Maybe I'm trying to decide if that one needs to go in a small one or a large one. I think a small one. I think they'll all fit. And if they don't, I can always move them if I need to. And I'm probably, I'm sure I've said this before, but this is far and away why I love my Elizabeth Ward trays because I can customize them. You know, I've got six trays now and a cute little cabinet to keep them in. It just makes for a nice customization. So I've got extras of all of the sizes as well that I have bought over the couple of years that I've diamond painted. And I avoided, you can get a tray that is nothing but these teeny tiny ones and I avoided it because I didn't think that I would need them turns out I do so maybe maybe I'll get a tray although I don't really need another tray just of those tiny ones I mean I can just do like I'm doing now and go into my trays that I'm not using and pull out little containers 
from the ones that I'm not using. I have six, like I said, of those war trays and I'm never gonna have, I shouldn't say never because if I do, then I will. But I can't imagine that I would have a reason to have more than six kits on the go at once. Well, I guess I shouldn't say never because when I was doing my 30 by 30 challenge, I did need to kit up multiple kits at once, but they were small kits. So I was doing them, you know, in my, not in my Elizabeth Ward, I was doing them in a, my little one inch cube containers. And knock on wood, I haven't spilled a ton of these yet. All right, so now I'm in the 3700s. Yep, all of these can go here. So I've got four there. And then I realized I didn't show you guys the canvas really after I got the washi tape on there. So let me go back, stick around to the end because I will go back and do that and kind of I'll peel some of the little cute little flamingo release papers that I made. I'll peel those off and we can look at what the actual symbols look like because she prints all of these herself. She has a printer that allows her to print on the fabric or whatever the material is that she prints, you know, the canvases. So she can kind of design the symbols. So I'm really curious because I've been looking as I've been doing the um, stickers here at all the various symbols and they look like they're all going to be, you know, different enough that you shouldn't have any trouble telling them apart. And just from what I saw, you know, as I was peeling everything back and putting the washi tape and release papers on, the colors on the canvas itself are really nice and vibrant. So, you know, shouldn't need a light pad or anything, whoops, missed one, to um, diamond paint. Because I know a lot of people use a, a light pad all the time. I just, the light fatigues my eyes. I, I get tired, my eyes get tired faster if I diamond paint with a light pad. I'm going to have room for all of these the way that I thought I would. I may have to move some of these around in my tray. Well, we'll see. I've got what, six left? Is that right? So let me put them in order here. 18, 10, 01, 15, nope, that goes before that, 33, and 16. Okay, I only have four of the small ones left. These two definitely small, but I think any of these I could fit in this size. So again, let me just peel the backing off here because these two can definitely go in the smallest size. So I'll do those two and then I'll see about the next one. I'm really loving these cute little scissors though. These are the perfect size for exactly what I'm doing here. And now I'm starting to drop things. That doesn't bode well. I was hoping I would make it all the way through without spilling anything. All right, let me get these two in there and then I'll probably put the next two in the next size up. I could go get some more of this small size, but I have room in the tray for the next larger size and I think it'll be fine. Yeah, like I said, I really was thinking about putting some ABs in. I guess I could. I don't know if I have any round ABs in some of the pinks. I wouldn't want to put it in, in like any of the greens or anything because I think that would look a little odd because it is a realistic photo. But I think looking at on the picture here, you can see kind of some of the white or the white or it's probably like a blue or a light purple. Maybe I could put some, some ABs in there. That might look okay. I might look at doing that and doing ABs for that. But I don't think, you know, putting it in the background and everything, because it's a realistic picture, I just don't think that would look good to sprinkle in a whole bunch of ABs. So I don't know why I am on such a flamingo kick, why I have been for a while. Just, they're just amazing. Those weird long necks, their weird legs, standing on one leg, the fact that they're 
not really pink to begin with. They're just that way because of the food they eat. That's all just kind of crazy. One of those weird animals that, you know, you'd never believe it unless you saw it. All right, there are all of the colors. So I've got them all on here. I've got three rows of the little small ones, and then I've got the medium, the large of the, the greens, mostly greens as you can see. So gonna be probably lots of confetti. So here's this. Let me go grab the canvas itself. I'm gonna peel off one of the cover sheets and we will look at the actual symbols on the canvas. So I'll be right back. Okay, since I've already got all the release papers on there, I don't wanna peel them all off, but just looking at this little section, I can see how nice and clear, even the green ones, you know, that are next to each other, everything is super duper nice and vibrant colors and the symbols are nice and crisp and clean. So shouldn't have any problem whatsoever diamond painting this one. I can't wait to get started. So a huge thank you again to Susan for sending me this kit. I think it's such a, a pretty picture and a huge thank you again to Krista for answering all of my questions. So again, I will put a link in the description box down below to both this particular kit and the website. If you're not a fan of double-sided adhesive, don't worry. Like I said, all of the newer kits should be poured glue. I'm sure uh, you can ask if that's a big deal to you. For me, it isn't. I'm perfectly happy doing the double-sided adhesive. That's it for me today, guys. Thanks so much for sticking around till the end of the video. Before you leave, don't forget to do all the things. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and hit that bell notification icon so that you can be informed of future uploads. And as always guys, thanks so much for watching.